expected. He, he, he gives us everything he's got. You come into a situation today facing a, a very good offensive team that can score in numerous ways. And uh, he did what he needed to do. He got the leadoff hitter. He was efficient with his pitches. He was landing his breaking stuff. He was good with his fastball. And he just commanded his heartbeat in, in such a, a great way in, in this particular game. Uh, we played enough defense behind him. It was solid. We caught the ball. We did what we needed to do that way. CJ caught a, another great game and threw out a runner, which was a, really important at the time early in the baseball game. And then we just scratched out a, enough runs. Uh, runs were very expensive today. And we kind of knew that that was going to be the deal. But you get to this point in the season when you've got the best 16 teams in the country all coming together, it, it typically is this way. So uh, we'll, we'll take it and we'll move forward. Thanks, Coach. We'll go ahead and open up questions for Kumar Rocker. If you have a question for Kumar, please utilize the raise your hand feature. Chris Lee, we'll go ahead and start with you. Yeah, Kumar, you were throwing something that was 73, 74, 75. Uh, looked like a curveball. I don't think you've thrown many of those. Was that a new pitch or one that maybe ever used much? Or was that just a different look to something you already have? Uh, just a different look to something I already have. Kayla Anderson. Oh, sorry. Sorry, Chris. Uh, what would you call that pitch? I call it a curveball. Kayla Anderson. Hey, Kumar. Uh, just for you possibly being the last time you're out there on the mound, uh, on West End, how did it feel for you today? Uh, your family, obviously in attendance, your mom got really emotional after you, you, you walked off the mound, but just all together, how did it feel for you today? Obviously getting the win, but but also because it could be your last time taking the mound there. Right, I was just happy to be out there. And uh, I think Cooper in the dugout, after I got taken out, he said, how's it feel your last time pitching there? And that's when it kind of set in and uh, glad I didn't take it for granted. I'm glad we got one more to play to get to Omaha. Kayla, if you have another one, go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to ask about Javi's early run. Um, getting, you know, being able to plate uh, a Vandy boy on the board early, how important was that considering you knew this was going to be probably a pitcher's duel? Um, I think it was one of those things that's kind of like all you need at the moment is you got to tell yourself as a pitcher going against a guy like that. He did an incredible job today, and I mean, I saw it from, the, from a dugout seat. It was amazing. Adam Sparks. Yeah, Kumar, you've obviously done this before, pitched well in the postseason. Having gone through big postseason games before, how did that influence how you um, prepared for this one, how you handled this one? Uh, it's an opportunity for you to leave it all out there at the moment because it's coming down to the wire and you got to do what's best for your team at the moment. Thanks. Joe Rexrod. Yeah, Kamar, kind of following up on the on the discussion of the pitches, uh, it was today? Would you say was today was a day where you had everything working well for you? And how much was the cutter a factor for you today? Uh, yeah, I think I had everything working for me, and the cutter was really to get ahead on righties, gets me to the outside corner, and uh, shows them something different. Robbie. Uh, hey, Kamar, was it pretty much your intention to go the distance today? And I guess when did fatigue set in, if at all? I really wasn't searching for an outcome, but uh, it is what it is, and I got there, so yeah. Any more questions for Kumar? Great, we'll go ahead and open up questions for Javier Vaz. If you have a question for Javi, please utilize the raise your hand feature. Aria? Um, how did you guys, as an offense, approach a pitcher like Gavin Williams? Just being on top of the fastball, really uh, attack the fastball, attack the pitcher. And hats off to him, credits to him, but he pitched a really good game. And we just did all we could to get those runs across. And then how big was it for you guys to get an early run on the board with Kumar pitching? Uh, it's big, it's big. Uh, we want the momentum always in our dugout and getting that run really jump-started us for a little bit. And having him on the mound, like, we don't have to do much. He helps us a lot. And credits to him, he pitched a great game. And we only need two. 
Chris Lee. You see premium fastballs in practice all the time. What was it about his that was different and just so tough to handle? This one was 97, 99. Any more questions for Javier Vaz? Great, thanks, Javi. Uh, coach, we'll go ahead and open up questions for you. If you have a question for Vanderbilt head coach, Tim Corbin, please utilize the raise your hand feature. Robbie, we'll start with you. Hey, Tim, do you think, I mean, you know, can you speak to how this was maybe like a vintage Kumar performance today? And, and where do you think off the top of your head, maybe this is among best performances from his career and maybe even other players who you've coached? Well, I mean, I don't rate performances. I, I just think that he gives us what we need at the time that we need it. And, and this is a certainly a situation at the end of the year where you know that games are important and they're, they're closely contested and there's, there's very little difference between teams. So you need guys that are willing to, to get out there and, and leave it on the field. And he's done that continually. There hasn't been a day that He's been here at Vanderbilt where he, he hasn't done that, but he, he feels these situations, as I've said before, he loves the arena of competition and uh, that's what separates him in so many different ways. Adam Sparks. Yeah, Tim, in terms of that, just how he handles pressure in the postseason, is that something you think Kumar has learned with experience or is that something just innate within him? I don't know. You'd have to ask him, but I, I think certainly things are learned along the way. I mean, that, that's why he came to school uh, to be in these environments right here. These environments are not easy. And you get into SEC play on Friday night, you, you've got a bullseye on you and you're well scouted and you have to be able to pitch through that. But he's, ne he's never blinked. And I think uh, the competitive fibers are in him. I mean, you, you, you just... Those are innate, but at the same time, competitive fibers and, and learning how to compete within these situations is a little bit different. Uh, it, it's it's one thing to to pitch in a minor league game in front of ten people who uh, are not paying attention to the game. It's another thing to go on the road or pitch in these environments right here when you've got five thousand, six thousand people and you can feel the temperature of the game. Thanks. Thanks. Aria. Um, what did you see out of the offense today against another really good pitcher in Gavin Williams? Well, I mean, that's, that's Gavin Williams. I mean, Gavin, you, you got to give, like Javi said, you, you got to give that kid credit. He pitched so well and he attacked with his fastball early and then he started landing two different breaking balls. When you throw 97 to 99 and you land a curveball and a slider, you're pretty tough to hit. And he did that. And he throws a lot of strikes. And he didn't blink either. You know, you had two big league pitchers out there. Um, I, I think people who watch that game today will step back four or five years from now and say, remember that game at, uh, at Hawkins Field the, against East Carolina and uh, that, that two quality guys. Chris Lee. Yeah, can you talk about Enrique's manufacturing a run for you late in the game? And that play at third, was, was that his call? Was that just to go on contact play? What was the conversation on that? Simple, I mean, it's the fastest guy we've got. We just told him to get the best lead he could, keep rhythm in his feet, get walking to the plate. When the ball struck, go. It's contact play. And uh, you can't wait around. I mean, it's one of those things that you knew that the runs, as I said, were expensive. And any way we could score, we could score. And both of our runs today came on runners at third base and the ability of two hitters, Javi being one, Dominic being another, just to touch the ball. Javi did it early in the count. Dominic did it with two strikes. But that's that's really what you got to do. That's, the offense is... It's difficult, and uh, we did what we needed to do to score those runs, and we worked off of Enrique's feet and slide. That was a hell of a slide. Joe Rexrod. Yeah, Tim, you mentioned having that front row seat to, uh, to rock the last two and a half seasons. I'm just wondering, are you able to appreciate things like that in the midst of a game? And then also, 
Is that something you want your team to have in perspective when you go into games like this? Is that part of the formula of handling moments like this? I mean, 100%. I, I don't take any day for granted, and I certainly don't take, take a day where he's pitching for granted at all. I, I love being able to be there and sit feet away from him and watch him compete. I mean, it's it, it's fun. I, I mean, I talk about it in front of him. I talk about it behind his back. I mean, it's it's just what it is. I you love passion. I mean, when you see passionate kids that care about what they're doing and they leave everything on the field and they are such backers of their team and they protect their team in every way, I'm all in. I'm all in. That's that's all you ever want in the college level. You can feel it. It's, it's so raw and it's so pure that, you know, you just you just get so emotionally entrenched in it. And he does that for you because he's animated. He loves it. He's got a smile on his face at times. Sometimes he growls, sometimes he makes noises, but you know what? It's like, it's like that tennis player playing a five set match in Wimbledon, You're just leaving everything on the court. And that's what he does. Kayla Anderson. Yeah, coach, going back to just this type of game, it's being a pitcher's duel, um, you kind of scratching and clawing for every run. Can you learn from something from this? Is it a valuable thing for your guys to to play this type of game in the postseason right now? And well, yes. I mean, of course. I mean, you play these games there. You really have to have a high level of concentration because those defensive plays, whether it's the last ball that Gonzo hit, whether it's the fly ball that Nolan caught, whether it's the fly balls that Javi caught, whether it's the ground balls that were hit to Parker. I mean, there's a high level of concentration by the defenders. You can't waver at all. And focus and intent takes a lot of energy and it makes you really, really tired. And these guys will rest well this afternoon and uh, gather as much energy as they can for tomorrow. But yes, playing those games. I mean, last week helped today and so on and so on. You play these close ball games, then it does make you concentrate at a level that uh, is different than a lot of baseball that you play during the year. Robbie. Uh, Tim, bringing in Luke Murphy, Murphy for the ninth, was that predetermined? Was that because the eighth or the bottom of the eighth went long or something else? No, predetermined. I think we've got time for one more question. Aria, go ahead. Oh, I think it just had my, didn't put my. Great, no worries. Coach, Javi, Kumar, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it.